Hello everybody, my name is Jules and today we are going over one of the funniest games of 2022 and maybe all time. This one is between the absolute goat Magnus Carlsen and Richard Report. And if you guys don't know who this is, well I'm not going to explain Magnus Carlsen because you could just look him up. Actually, just be careful because if you look him up there are a bunch of fan fictions and some like weird content out there. Or actually, that might be what you're looking for. I don't know. But Richard Rapport also kind of looks like a Game of Thrones character. So I was rooting for him because I'm really into Game of Thrones. Although he does kind of look like the Game of Thrones character that would die on episode two. Anyway, we are getting off the topic. This game occurred at the FIDE World Blitz Chess Championship of 2022. And to set the scene, it was a dark and stormy night in Kazakhstan when young upstart Richard Rapport decided to challenge Magnus Carlsen as black. So the game starts out not with Magnus Carlsen's usual b3, which he's actually been doing a lot during this tournament, but with d4, and we see a response with the French defense. And everything's following. We kind of get an advanced French here. Looking very, very normal and a little boring. I'm a little disappointed with our friend Richie for playing the French because the French is absolutely disgusting. Don't come at me in the comments for saying the French is disgusting because I think most people agree with me. No one likes playing against the French, which is probably why people play the French. But anyway, this is going pretty normal. A nice little spicy H4 from Magnus who really likes to push pawns. Look at that little pawn push. That pawn is saying, I want to I wanna get to that eighth rank. I want to join the party. Knight to f3, all of this is pretty normal. What's kind of interesting here is Richard Rapport has achieved an equal position as black pretty early on. So look at this, he's taking up a lot of space. This is kind of a sexy move. We're, we're fans, we're fans. Cause look at all the space he's taken up. I guess maybe I have to reconsider my thoughts on the French. Anyway, bishop e2, bishop coming in. All of Magnus's pieces are a little bit crunched, but he's still doing pretty well here. Queen to d2. Look at this queenside castle. Now, I don't know about you, but I find queenside castles kind of cute. They're very aggressive. He's planning just a crazy attack here. But we have to be a little careful because Magnus is tricky. Magnus is very, very tricky. So, knight to h2. King to b7. Don't ask me why, why they're making these moves. Sometimes Grandmaster moves kind of go past me and us and all of us. I think to a lot of us normal chess players, Grandmasters are a little bit like unicorns. But if anything, this game shows that Grandmasters can blunder just like us. So wait for it. King to f1. So this is where it gets spicy. So what Magnus is preparing right now is a king side attack. All right. And wait for it. Look at that. So you might be saying, Jules, what is going on here? And I don't know. Actually, the engine doesn't really know either. So what it looks like right now is Magnus is sacking a piece um, in order to get a stronger kingside attack. But if you also look at this position, Black has a lot of pieces defending his king side. Also, you know, black, oh, white is trying to create a pass pawn, which ends up being a pretty good thing. I'm not going to spoil anything for you, but we'll, we'll see how this goes. So this actually isn't the worst move. That, however, the engines hate. Richard does the best thing according to the engines. King b7. White takes. And this pawn looks kind of scary. Like this, this pawn kind of looks like your mom yelling at you to clean, clean your room when you're playing a video game. But at the same time, there's a lot of defenders on this eighth rank, so the pawn's not going to be able to join the party anytime soon. And we see the queen coming in to defend. Okay. Uh, you know what? At this point, at this point, we're all just kind of wondering what's going on. Keep in mind, this is a blitz game, so no, neither party has a lot of time to calculate. But this rook sack... I don't know. I don't know what's happening, guys. I'm lost. I'm lost. Ugh. Keep in mind, we were all watching this at 2 a.m., so we're like, are we are, are we hallucinating? Did, did Magnus just sack a rook? The queen comes in to attack, but again, a lot of the black pieces are just, you know, ready to defend. Also, this eighth rank is still pretty protected. Actually, this was apparently the wrong move. 
I don't know why. Do you know why? Maybe put in the comments why. I would love to know. I would love to know. Queen comes down to attack. And right now, the eval bar is pretty shifted in Richard's favor. And this would be a huge upset. Magnus has been doing great at this tournament. He's been doing great so far. And not only that, but he has white right now, which usually white has the better chances to win. So we have an attack. It looks scary, but actually, you know, the eval bar, the eval bar doesn't mind it. Eval bar is still a fan. All right. Okay, so let's look at this position for a second. <laughs> Keep in mind, this is from my very um, mediocre at chess eyes, but sometimes I feel like it's helpful to have people at a certain level explain things, because sometimes when, when people at higher levels explain things, my brain goes like, like, you know that little monkey from The Simpsons? Like, that's, that's what my brain looks like sometimes with, with these positions. But this is looking pretty scary. We have a nice little pin here. However, this piece is on the eighth rank. It can't promote yet because we have two rooks defending. There's this kind of scary pawn, but the king has an escape square on b7. All right, some aggressive report tactics. And you might be like, what? That was so cute. Look at this tactic. He's taking the rook. But actually it gives white a little bit of momentum which white is using, and it's even now. It's even? Somehow we went from, like, minus three in Richard Rapport's favor to even? I don't know, man. I don't know. Okay. Now now this is looking in Maggie's favor. So we, we, were, we were team Richard, now we're team Maggie. I, I don't know. I don't know, man. There's not a lot of squares left for this king. So that was a huge error. Magnus gets a little impatient, decides to promote. He has, only has 32 seconds on his clock. Um... But the queen is taken right away. Queen goes to d7, threatening mate here. So we have to be a little careful. And then look at this move. Rook takes f4 and, you know, our Game of Thrones hero, Richard Rapport, has not died yet. In fact, he's thriving. He's, he's fighting all the White Walkers out here. Just, just vibing. That's kind of a crazy move. Pawn takes... Now we we need to have all four seam moves here because um, either that or we need to defend the square. The square is still a little bit unprotected. Keep going, king to h4. White takes, gets a piece with momentum. Still momentum. Okay, this is insane. So now the eval bar is minus six. So we somehow were like team Richard, then we're team Magnus, and now we're team Richard again. And all of us are just like, what is going on? Where this would be crazy. This is insane. Even Magnus is probably like, what, what is going on? We still have the momentum as black. Black is up a piece. But again, we have to be really careful of that B7 square. Now, this is this is a position where someone like me would be like, ah, I'm chilling. Go here and blunder mate, you know? But it happens to the best of us. But you know what? Grandmasters, they're just like us. They blunder. So we're still minus seven now. That's a huge advantage. We have to be very, very careful here. All right, queen trade. And now we have black, which is up a rook. But we have to be very careful. There's a lot of past pawns. Black's king really doesn't have a lot of opportunity to be in the action. But it's minus nine. It's minus nine. So that's pretty much like a queen advantage here. So Richard's Richard's doing pretty well, holding on to his advantage. We've got these two pawns saying, I, I want to come party, let me party. Why aren't you letting me into the frat house? I'm pretty. Let me in. Let me in. All right. Takes and this is terrifying for white. I would not want to be white here. Oof. Who's going to promote first? There's definitely going to be a promotion happening. One of the issues here is that there's a promotion here that threatens with check. Uh, let's say a pawn moves, rook takes, takes. That's detrimental. That's game over. But we see this promotion. Promotion. This is negative 15 for Richard. Come on, Richard. That's like two queens of an advantage. And we're all crying. We're like, go team Richard. We got this. Woo! Anyway, but there's 18 seconds on the clock for Magnus Carlsen and 26 seconds. So let's keep that in mind. Let's keep that in mind. So it's a very quick game. This is also over the board. There's no pre-moves. Makes it a little more complicated. 
Oh no. Oh no. Keep in mind there there is a little increment. So he's gaining a little time here. Still looking good. What? Is this minus 51? Minus 51. This is like this is mate soon. This is mate soon. There are so many, like, there's so many good tactics here. There's so many good tactics here. You know, you could go queen e6. Check. You could go queen h4. You could really just give any check here. Or that. I don't know. This is one of those moments where it's like grandmasters, they're just like us, except we don't understand any of their moves. They go c3. We do have the queen protecting the rook. Queen goes to f7. This is mate in eight. This is mate in eight. I mean, let's look at this. Let's look at let's look at what's the best moves for for Richard. Keeping in mind he doesn't have a lot of time on his clock, but Magnus Carlsen only has four seconds. Four seconds with increment. So we have queen h4. King goes to g6. Rook c6. Check. This is what could have happened, by the way. King f5. Queen f2. Takes queen. This pawn is never going to promote. Honestly, at this point, we probably see a Magnus Carlsen resignation. Mate in two. Mate one. And, and then just GG's. This game's over. This game's over. So that's what could have happened. That's what could have happened. No, let's let's go back. Let's go back to what actually happened. This actually allows an equal position. Okay, what what what? Let's look at that. So in two moves, we blundered back to an equal position. And now white is ahead. And we're going to see why. This is actually a really cool tactic from Magnus Carlsen. Queen promotes. And you might be like, well, my dear friend, why can't we just take on f7? You're probably not saying that, but we're going to explain it anyway, just in case. Look at this. Oh, wait, sorry. That That's check. <laughs> you move. You take. I mean, it's just impossible to defend against this mate. It's just impossible. Also, even if you could defend against this mate, you're um, queen against a rook, so that's that's not very bougie. All right, and you also well, we're gonna see what what happens here. We're gonna see what happens here. If you take here, you have mate in one, and this is this is the beautiful tactic, and this is probably what Richard failed to calculate because. If there wasn't mate in one, you would still be up a rook. You have this promotion pawn. It's looking good. But at this point, there's not really much you can do. So let's go back to the game. So ah, we were in Richard's favor, and now we're in Magnus's favor. And we were in Richard's favor, and now we're in Magnus's favor. And we were in Richard's favor, and everyone's just like, what is going on? There's four seconds on the clock. There's 20 seconds on the clock. Everyone's just going crazy. This is insane. He's trying to hold his position, but at this point, you know, it's over. Mag Magnus is extremely accurate in situations like this. It's plus 56. It's over. It's over. And now this game's kind of hilarious because it's like, we've got like those weird Magnus Carlsen sacks. And usually when Magnus sacks, like everyone quakes for fear. But it's like, he was just, he was kind of giving up pieces up front. And then we have Richard, he was like, literally mate in seven and then all of a sudden it's blundered and then it's main seven for white and this game is just insane and it kind of shows that grandmasters can blunder too especially in time pressure and i think this is kind of why we're having more of a push towards blitz tournaments because one they're incredibly entertaining to watch like look at this this is hilarious and also it's a lot easier to understand from our perspective like looking at these moves we can take our time and really kind of understand what's going on. We can understand when there's a blunder. And it's also very hilarious to see the world champion blunder like mate and seven. But you know what? That's that. That's that. I hope you guys enjoyed. Please leave a comment below letting me know if you think this is one of the funniest games of all time. Also, if there was a move there that I didn't quite catch or a reason that I didn't quite catch, please let me know. This is very exciting for us. I really enjoyed watching this live. 
And I hope if you guys weren't able to catch it, you enjoyed seeing this game as well. Again, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you next time.